So one of the hardest things about setting up a CO2 system is not just about getting the equipment and figuring out what you need, but it's also the aftermath, how to dial in your CO2. For experienced Aquarius, it's a very simple matter. We had experience with it, but as a beginner, it's kind of hard to figure out where to start. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I figure out how to dial in my CO2. Hi guys, welcome to another video. I'm Chum from The Water Box, and we are going to talk about all aquarium stuff. So if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, hit that like button as well. So let's jump into it. You got all your CO2 equipment, or you know what to get, but you just don't know how to start. You keep hearing me talk about dialing in your CO2. You're gonna learn how to dial in. It's gonna take a few weeks. Well, I'm gonna show you how I do it, so you'll be able to figure out how to do it for yourself. Once you get it down, it's really, really easy. So let's go through a few things that you might need to know. First of all, this is about pressurized CO2, meaning you're getting pressurized CO2 in a bottle and you're diffusing it somehow into your tank. This has nothing to do with doing yourself CO2 or passive CO2. Now what I'm gonna show you is my process. Some people have their own process, but this is the easiest way that I figured out how to do it and it works for me. First of all, for my method and pretty much any method that I know about dialing your CO2, you need to know how much CO2 level is in your tank and the best way to do that is to measure your pH and KH. There's no way of getting around that. Now ultimately, they say that the perfect amount of CO2 in your tank is 30 ppms while the lights are going, while your plants are in photosynthesis, but you have to be careful about how to get there. You don't actually have to get 30 ppms, that's just like the top level that everyone wants to reach for, but you don't have to. What you have to do is stay in the green zone, and I'll explain that in a bit. Now, there's no quick way of doing this. There's no quick way of dialing your CO2. Everyone keeps asking me, well, how many bubbles per second do I need to do for this tank for that? It does not work that way. It's gonna take days, sometimes weeks, to dial in your CO2, but if you follow these methods, it's really easy to do. It takes time, sure, but if you wanna master this, take your time. And finally, you don't want spikes. You wanna ramp up the CO2 levels in your tank. You don't want a sudden spike and then kill all your fish. That will kill all your fish, okay? And that's what people are talking about when they're worried about killing the fish, or one of the ways. It's just a huge spike in a dump of CO2 in your tank, and then suddenly your pH just completely drops and just kills all your fish, they suffocate, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's talk about the process. First thing you need to know is the CO2 chart. It looks like this. Now, everyone freaks out when they see this. I don't know why, but here's the chart. And there's a lot of charts out there, and this is what I suggest using. The link to it is in the description of the video at the bottom below. Okay, next, find your optimal CO2 target. Okay, so again, go back to the chart here. So you measure your KH. Let's just say, for example, your KH is six. And in that case, you want your target to land between pH of 6.8 and 7.2. See, there's no trick to it. That is your target number of your pH, 6.8 to 7.2. If you land in the green zone, that means you have plenty of CO2 for your tanks, right? Of course, the more the better, but if you're in that green zone, it's very optimal. But one important thing that you need to know is that your cage do change. It shouldn't change drastically, right? You, you can measure your cage every, say, month, maybe two months, just to double check that make sure your cage doesn't change. Now your cage can change because of uh, various reasons. Uh, stuff that's in your water, stuff that's coming out of the tap, if you're using tap water to do water changes, and stuff like that. So I highly suggest you just keep an eye on your cage, measure it every month, every other two months. Now, of course, if you're using distilled water, that shouldn't change at all because it shouldn't be at zero and then you have to add minerals to it to get to that target KH number, okay? But that's for a different matter. That's for a different video. So now you understand how to take the readings and you understand where your target is. Let's talk about your baseline reading. This is day one. So, you know, get a piece of paper or use your computer or whatever so that you can note these numbers down. What I do is put it in an Excel sheet. That way I could chart it out later. So for day one, we want to start at one bubble per second. This is our baseline. This is where it's a very good start. It should be neutral. It shouldn't be enough to kill your fish, right? What you want to do is take a pH reading before the lights go on. Now remember, you already took a reading of your cage to know what it is, okay? Your cage in this example is six. So take a reading of your pH and jot down that number. Wait about two hours, do another pH reading. Jot down that number. Wait another two hours again, take the reading, jot down that number. You see where I'm getting at here? You take a reading every two hours until the lights go out. And I'll explain why this is important. 
Now this gives you a good overall reading about your tank. If you know how to use Excel, it's really easy. Plot those numbers and make a chart and you see a curve. This curve tells us a lot of things about your tank. Let's go over a few scenarios based on that curve, okay? First of all, let's talk about having a flat curve. Now, if your curve is flat, then there's obviously something wrong with your CO2. And that's obvious right off the bat, we know something's wrong. It's not pumping CO2 in your tank. Okay, with one bubble per second, your curve should at least move, okay, in the photo period of when the lights are on. So we have to figure out what's wrong. So we have to check your CO2 system. Okay, so that's if you don't have a curve. Let's talk about what happens when we have a curve and how to look at that curve. So, okay, this is a little complicated to explain, but it's really easy too. You'll get it. You might have to, you know, listen to this part a couple of times. What you want to do is be able to put enough bubble per second out to so that your chart reaches the highest green level you can get before the lights go out. Got it? To figure this out, we have to just figure out how many bubbles per second we need to put in the tank to get that type of curve. Okay, so the next day you got to do it again. The step at this point, you got to do two bubbles per second. Okay, so at two bubbles per second, you do a pH reading every two hours and then trot out your curve again and see how well that's doing. You do that for a few days, it shouldn't take too long. Now, if you do not have any livestock in your tank, it's just plants, even better. You could do increments of two bubbles per day or three bubbles per day, right? If your curve is reaching that green peak, right before the lights go out, you're good. If it's going over, you know, maybe the next day try two bubbles per second instead of three bubbles per second, okay? Let's talk about shifting your curve, okay? Shifting your curve is a way to actually get that level up to the green while the light's on as long as possible, okay? Now, you don't have to do this. You, you can be done at this point and say, okay, I'm done. But you notice that there are some people out there like me who start to CO2 before the lights go on, right? And there's some people out there that take something called a siesta break. That's what we're gonna talk about in this section here. So the best way to explain this is, since we already done a curve, we use that curve to figure out when to shift the CO2 time, okay? So let's look at this chart here. Now, the reason why I start my CO2 like an hour or two before the lights go on is that I want the CO2 to ramp up when the lights go on, right? When the lights go on, I want my plants going into photosynthesis knowing that there's optimal CO2 in the tank. So this is what you do. It's like you figure out, based on your curve, how to shift that time over. Okay, if it took two hours to get to this amount of CO2 in your tank, then shift two hours back and start the CO2 before you start the lights. Now, of course, if you do that, you either do it manually, so you gotta keep track of when you gotta turn it on and off, or you know you get two timers, one timer for your CO2, one timer for your lights, okay? And that's the best way to do it, figure out how to shift. Now, don't overshift. Okay, if you overshift, then that means that you're gonna have higher C CO2 levels by the time the lights go out. And if that's a problem there, uh, you, you shift the time that it goes out as well. So that's why you do something like one hour of CO2 before the lights go on, the lights go on an hour later. Then turn off your CO2 an hour before the lights go off, and then an hour later the lights go off. So not only do you have to shift the beginning time, you also have to shift the ending time. Now, there's something called the siesta period that sometimes people use, and this is a very interesting thing as well. What siesta period does is this. You know, you have everything going normally, and then in the middle of the day, you shut off the lights for an hour. Okay, that means it shuts down the photosynthesis of your plants, and then lets the tank or the CO2 in your tank to ramp up during that hour, so that when the lights come back on after that hour is over, your, C your CO2 is at optimal levels again for your plants to eat, to feed on while photosynthesis kicks back in. Now I'm sure this is lots of explaining to do, but again, sit through this video a couple times if you don't get it until you get it. It's really easy once you figure out what, especially once you try it out. Because once you try it out, then you're king. Okay, just remember that cage does change. Okay, you also want to kind of fix your levels and check the, and do the whole level checking, the baseline checking again after a few months if you have if your plant load changes if you have a lot more plants after you know three months your levels are going to change it's going to eat up more co2 levels so that your curve is going to be lower so then at that point you might want to up your bubbles per second by one just to you know fill in that curve 
or you might have lost a mass amount of plants in three months. So you have to readjust by lowering the CO2 so you don't hit that red level. Okay, so a lot of stuff to learn, but trust me, it's fun. And once you get it, you will get it. Okay, so if you want to learn more about CO2, check out these videos, check out the playlist. I explain everything about CO2. So hopefully you'll get it down. I love you guys. See you guys in the next video. Remember, hit subscribe if you haven't subscribed and hit that like button. Bye.